In last week's video, we created a waffle chart using the easiest method. If you want to watch that video, there's a link up here. Now, to change that waffle chart into an object that we could place anywhere on our worksheet, we needed to use a linked picture. The problem is linked pictures don't work in Excel online. So in this video, I want to show you how to create a waffle chart that works everywhere. It doesn't matter if we're in Excel desktop or Excel online. So if you're ready, let's get started. So here we are in Excel and we already have our sheet set up. If you want to work along with this video, then please download the example file and you can find links in the descriptions box below. To start with, we have the word value in cell B2, and then the value that we want to put in our waffle chart in cell C2. After that, in cell B4, we have the word row max, and then in cell C4, the value of 10. And that's because we're going to create a 10 by 10 grid for our waffle chart, but yours could be a different size, therefore you might have a different number for your row max. Then below that we have two columns, one called columns and one called rows. In cell B7 we just have the sequence function that gives us the numbers from 1 to 10. And again the 10 just represents the fact that we are creating a 10 by 10 grid. I've used the sequence function but equally we could have hard coded those numbers in or created that sequence in any other way. Now we need to create the formula to show what number will be in each of our rows in our waffle chart. So let's start here, equals the minimum, so equals min, and I want the minimum value of either my column number multiplied by my row max, and I'll press F4 to lock in that cell, or the number that I want to put onto my waffle chart. I'll close that, I need to add F4 into that value as well. There we go, let's double click the fill handle and hopefully you can see where we're headed. So you can see that for our first row we have a value of 10, then 20, then 30, and then 32, and after that everything remains at 32 because that is the value that we want to plot in our chart. But we don't want the total value, we want the movement. So let's come back to the formula, and from that we want to take away the value of B7 minus one, and we want to multiply that by the row max. Let's copy that down, and you can see the value that we will show in each of the rows. So it's either 10, 10, 10, two. Unfortunately, we now get some negative numbers. So let's wrap this in a max. So the maximum of that value or zero. Perfect, we now have the values that we want to map inside our waffle chart. The next action we need to perform is to add the chart itself. So I'm going to select all of that data, including the header row. Then from the insert ribbon, I'll come across and select recommended charts. Now don't worry, we're not going to use one of these recommended charts. It was just an easy way to get into this dialog box. From the All Charts tab, I'm going to come down and select Combo. For the columns, we want to set that as a scatter chart. And for the rows, we want to show those as a stacked bar chart. We've only got one data series in this example, so we could just use a clustered bar, but in the scenario that we might have more series in the future, then a stacked bar is a good option. So I'll select that, Click OK, and now we have the chart that we're going to be using for our waffle chart. OK, now let's format the chart to give it the waffle effect that we want. I'll start by selecting one of the blue markers, come to the plus icon, and from there I want to add error bars. And I'll select more options. The chart formatting pane has appeared on the right, I'm just going to drag that across to the left, so we can see more of that as we work on our chart. So I've currently got the vertical error bar selected. I want those in both directions. I don't want a cap, but I do want a fixed value, and that fixed value is going to be 10. And again, this is because we have a 10 by 10 grid. 
Now let's do the same for the horizontal error bars. So I'll select those, want both, no cap and size 10. Next, we want to format these error bars. We'll go for a solid line that's white and a width of 1.5. We need to do this for both the horizontal and vertical lines. Finally, for our waffle effect, we need to click on the blue dots, go to the markers, give them no line and also no fill. At the moment, you probably think I've lost it because this looks nothing like a waffle chart, but I promise you it's about to come good in the next section. Okay, now let's get our chart axis to display correctly. We have a secondary axis at the top here. I don't need that, so I'll select it and just press delete. I can also delete the major grid lines, then I'll click on the vertical axis and let's set that in the axis options so the minimum is zero and the maximum is 10. And we want to do the same with the horizontal axis also. So zero and 10. There you go, you doubted me for a moment there, but it is starting to come good. I now don't need either of these axis. We don't need the legend, we don't need the chart title, we do want a solid fill inside the chart. Let's go for a light grey colour and let's also format the bar itself. So we'll go solid fill with a light blue and we just need to set our gap width to 0%. Look at that, we've now got a waffle chart. Let's make this fill our entire chart area. And now because it's a waffle, we probably want this to be square. So I'll select that, come to the size, and let's make this six centimeters by six centimeters and lock the aspect ratio. Right, let's turn off the grid lines. And now let's see what happens when we change our value. Yes, our waffle chart now changes accordingly. Just like in last week's video, we added a data label onto our chart. Let's do the same for our waffle chart that we've got here. Now, often we can add data labels into the chart itself. If we select the chart and then go to insert, and then from shapes and select a text box, if we were to draw that text box inside the chart, that text box will become part of the chart object. The problem is they still don't work in Excel online. So what we need to do is to go to shapes, text box, and just draw the text box onto the face of the chart. We'll click on the edge of the chart, then in the formula bar type equals, and I'll select the value cell. Okay, let's format this. I'll go for a dark blue font. Let's give it a font size, we'll go 24, we'll center a line, go for no fill, and then remove the border. So set the shape outline also to no outline. Fantastic, does that update? Yes, it does. So now we have our waffle chart that works in Excel desktop. Let's go ahead and see if it also works in Excel online. We've now got our workbook open in Excel online. You can see the chart renders correctly. Now let's see what happens if we change the value. Yes, it just took about half a second or so for that to recalculate. And you can see that our waffle chart updates correctly as does our data label. So through this, we've been able to create a waffle chart which works in Excel desktop and also in Excel online. Well, that's it. That's how we can create waffle charts out of stacked bar charts. Yes, it's not as easy as the first method that we saw last week, but if we follow along with those steps, it all comes together in the end. And we've created a waffle chart that works in desktop and online. If you like what we teach, then why not head over to excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy and check out our training program. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.